your partner confesses saying she loves you, but you're in disbelief for whatever reasons you have. You're torn between the two competing propositions, creating a painful conflict in your mind. She loves me? No. She loves me not. However, you do not have strong enough evidence if she does or does not. But you're generous. You give her the benefit of doubt at the moment until definite evidence comes up in front of you. You are actively looking for a piece of evidence and voila, she cheated on you. Once is enough for you and you dump your partner for good. So the uh, name of this tragic movie is called Null Hypothesis Significant Testing. Um, well, sorry about this, uh, um, you know, terrible voice acting. Um, I think I found the perfect song uh, matching this story, but you know that just a copyright claim is just uh, killing me. So I couldn't just uh, insert the uh, the background music for you to make it more interesting. But um, I tried my best. Anyhow, in a nutshell, the null hypothesis significant testing is all about making a proposition, a proposition, statement, claim, argument to be tested against the counter proposition, statement, claim, or argument. So typically, the hypothesis you want to test as a recap and support is called the alternative hypothesis or H1. And the counter to the alternative hypothesis is called the null hypothesis or H0. So in this previous story, your supporting hypothesis um, is that she loves me not. So let's say that is your supporting hypothesis. You're in disbelief. And the antithesis, right, H naught, is that she does love me, right? So this pair comprises all the possibilities, um, meaning that mutually exclusive they are, and then exclusive to each other. So once you have the hypothesis set up, then you need a decision rule, which hypothesis you will choose based on the kind of evidence you will collect and how likely to observe such evidence under the assumption that H naught or the null is true. So in essence, you are giving the benefit of doubt to the null by a very generous margin compared to the um, H1. So therefore, to reject the null, then you need a very strong or extreme evidence that is highly unlikely uh, were the null hypothesis true. So the evidence of choice in the story is the cheating episode, and the rule is the um, the rule of decision is the uh, the number of cheating episodes, uh, which is pretty much up to you to decide how many cheating incidents will be enough for you to dump someone who says, I love you. Um, well, I don't know about you, but, uh, you know, once should be more than enough for me. However, I know uh, a friend who still thinks that he loves his partner even after he knows his partner is a serial cheater. So now you go out and looking for the evidence or data. And once you have the evidence, then now the ball is in your hand. You decide which hypothesis is supported based on the decision rule you set in place before you collect the data. Right? So if you if you change your mind after the evidence, then you're breaking the rule of the null hypothesis and contesting. So statistical hypothesis testing um, is really um, you know, kind of a you know, decision making process using statistics. And this statistical hypothesis testing is typically used in research wherever a sample statistics is calculated from measuring the variable or variables of interest. So 
to make a decision using this uh, process, um, you know, the comparison is the key. So you want to compare if your sample statistics of interest is different enough from the status quo, considering the uh, sampling variation. So here the status quo represents the null hypothesis when nothing happens, right? So when no change is assumed, then um, you know, where is your statistics basically, the location of your statistics, how likely um, it is that uh, you can you, you see these statistics at that location. So that is the comparison you're gonna make to make the decision. And the decision rule, uh, is basically the probability or the likelihood of observing the statistics at a certain location. So you're going to use that as a decision rule. So that is the essence of the statistical hypothesis testing. So um, to give you a kind of a different spin on the um, the statistical hypothesis testing. Um, I'll give you some other example. And by the way, this is the personal confession of my drinking behavior, okay? So the story goes like this. I woke up with a terrible headache. So it was one of those extremely rare nights. I got totally drunk like a dog. I just don't remember what happened last night and now I realize that I lost my phone. But I have no clue where my phone is. Um, but you know, my theory is it should be somewhere in the house because that's where I find my phone most of the time when I'm home and sober. So only in a, a blue moon, very unlikely event, uh, once in a blue moon, my phone would be found outside of the house. So to find my phone, I use my wife's phone to infer the location of mine. So I hear the faint ringing telling me that it is somewhere outside the house. So in this story, my null is that the cell phone will be in the house. So that is my default position, assuming that nothing happened, right? Um, I know that it's in house. Uh, it's in the house because it is almost always, say, 95% of the time, if not 100%, uh, in the house when I'm home and sober. But wait, um, however unlikely it may sound, it is still possible that the cell phone is somewhere outside the house because I was drunk as a dog. So that is your alternative hypothesis. So hypothesis testing is very similar to this process of finding the location of the lost phone. So you have a pair of hypotheses about the possible location of the phone. And based on the mental model of the house and the surroundings, you know how likely each hypothesis will be true. So for example, you assigned a 95% chance that you will find your phone in the house. So Based on your hypothesis, it is, it is highly unlikely that you will find your phone outside the house, and that's why you assign very small fraction of uh, the likelihood that you will find the phone outside the house, which is, in this case, 5%. And please note that uh, the likelihood here is closely related to the uh, location of the phone. So, in other words, the further away the phone is from the house, the less likely it will be found. So now you ring the phone to collect the data and you hear the ringing and you decide the phone is uh, indeed outside the house, no matter how unlikely it was based on uh, where the sound is coming from. So null hypothesis significant testing is about making a decision about the unobserved location of a parameter inferred by the sample statistics based on a, this, a certain decision rule. So with NHST, we'd like to know whether the sample statistics is quote unquote significantly 
far from the usual or typical location, or it is still within the margin of error centered around the typical location. So to make such a decision, we need to calculate how likely the sample statistics is to be found in that location. So in um, null hypothesis sentiment testing, we have a mathematical model relating the likelihood uh, uh, of the, uh, the statistic to be occurred as a function of different locations of statistics. So one such example is the sampling distribution, uh, as we have learned previously. So the most likely location of the sample means is where the population mean is according to the properties of sampling distribution. And as the location of the sample mean moves away from the center to the tail end, it becomes more unlikely to observe such extreme statistics, which is described by the uh, sampling distribution. And in the context of research, we assign highly unequal weighting between the null and the alternative hypothesis. So we allow very generous margin for the null, whereas only tiny margin for the alternative to make it very difficult to support H1 against H0. So we will only be able to support our alternative hypothesis when the sample mean falls outside of the 95% confidence interval. Um, we will have more chance to talk about the reason behind this unequal weighting between the two hypotheses later on. And by the way, you can think of the 95% confidence interval as a GPS signal. So the middle dot here is the approximate whereabout of the sample mean, and the radius of the faint blue circle uh, represents the uncertainty about the current location um, by the GPS data. So next week, uh, we will go over the uh, steps running the uh, null hypothesis testing in much more detail with an example.